Well, we hope everyone's having a great day out there. We're, uh, we're having a great day here at Fluke Networks as well. And let's get started. We've got the, um, the joy of showing you a new product, which is always an exciting thing when you uh, work for a company like Fluke. And this is, uh, this is a pretty big one for us. It's a pretty big introduction. It's a great new product we've got coming out called the Link IQ Cable Plus Network Tester. Let's get started, and I'm going to start by introducing myself. I'm Mark Mullins. I'm the Product Marketing Manager. I'm also a founding member of Fluke Networks, helped get this organization going back in 1992. And I've also got somebody who's been here for quite a while as well, Mr. Jim Davis, our Regional Marketing Engineer and all-around product expert. You out there, Jim? I am. Good morning, everyone. All right. Well, you know, it might not be morning some of the places where these people are. Who knows? Uh, where with this audience uh, they might all be from. It's like anyway, good morning here. <laughs> <laughs> Did I harsh your mellow? Anyway, um, let's see, we got, we got a, a quick presentation for you here today, which take about 30 minutes. We're going to give you an overview of the product. So that's the PowerPoint stuff, the boring stuff. I'll try to do my best to keep you awake, but that's, uh, that's my part. Then Jim's going to take you through a live demonstration, which I think a live demonstration is, uh, watchable for the same reason that a NASCAR race is watchable. You hope something will crash and get a little excitement going. Uh, but Jim's pretty good at this, so that may or may not happen. So I hate to disappoint you, but if you think smoke is going to start coming out of his switch or something partway through the demonstration, you may end up being disappointed. We'll give you a few details about the product after that, and then we'll um, move on to a little question and answer session. So with that, let's get started. You know, if you work with networking, you usually end up in two different uh, situations where you've got an issue that you're trying to solve. And the first one is, will this thing work? I got a cable, is this gonna work? Is this switch port gonna work? If I plug this PC in here, is that gonna work? Um, or the second one is, why doesn't this work? Well, I plugged it in and it doesn't work. And then I have to figure out why that's my job and I have to solve it. Some of the questions you might run into, is, is this cable good? I know if this cable's any good. What's this cable connected to? Maybe I, it doesn't work, so I need to figure out what it's connected to. Maybe it's not connected to anything. Um, we also have to ask sometimes, why doesn't the connection work? Okay, it, it seems to be connected, but uh, I can't get any data through this thing. And then another question you have is, you know, can I power this camera or access point, speaker, some sort of power over Ethernet device? And finally, once you get the answer to those questions, you might need to know a way to prove whether or not you did it right. Uh, maybe it's to a customer if you're a contractor and you're installing, say, some security cameras, or maybe it's to your boss if you're out there troubleshooting, solving trouble tickets, and you want to show that it's been done right. And that's what the Link IQ is to help you do all of these different things. So let's go through kind of a quick overview of what it looks like. So we talked about this first question, will this cable support my application requirements? Well, in the Link IQ, it's got a very simple auto test. I plug the cable in, I plug a remote into the other end, I hit test, it figures out, oh, you wanna do a cable test, that's great. And it automatically pops up these answers. It'll show you the remote ID that you're connected to, the length of the cable, and most interestingly, this bandwidth speedometer. Now what this bandwidth speedometer is telling me, say in this case, is that the cable is capable of handling up to 5G, five gigabit per second ethernet. And in this case, it says you set a test limit for two and a half, but it's actually five. So that's, that's in excess of what you're looking for. Therefore, this cable will pass. And that's why you get this pass indication at the top. So a nice, simple answer to that. Now, sometimes you might take a Link IQ and plug it into a drop and think you're testing a cable and you find out you're plugged into a network. And now it'll tell you, well, can this network support my application? And it can do that. It'll give you some key switch information, the port of the switch, the name of the switch, the VLAN of that port, and also the connection speeds that are being advertised by the switch. So in this case, the switch says, yeah, I can handle gig, I can handle, I'm just, yeah, I can handle gig, I can handle 100 base T or 10 base T. So now I know what my switch can handle. And so I know what my network is capable of handling. Now, one of the things we get a lot of questions on is when Link IQ gives you a speed measurement versus a cable category measurement. You know, you might say, hey, this is great. This tester can tell me the category of the cable. Well, 
those are two different things. So those of you in the US are probably familiar with the Telecommunications Industry Association standards for cabling. Those of you outside the US may know about the International Standards Organization uh, cabling, as they call them classes. In the US, they call them categories. And you're probably familiar with category five, five E, six, et cetera. Now, testing a cable for against the cable against these standards for say category compliance involves measuring the signal and the noise. And as we all know, if the noise gets too big and the signal gets too small at a given frequency, then the cable's not going to be able to transmit data. So that's what these measurements are all about. What Link IQ does is something a little bit different. They're based on IEEE standards, which define the performance of applications on the network with their connection speed. And so this little diagram down here kind of helps you understand this, is that category 5E is designed to handle gigabit ethernet, or if I should say it can handle it. And in fact, that's what it was originally designed for. But category 5E actually has more capability beyond just 1000 base T. 1000 base T will work in category five, but it doesn't really use up all the performance. There are other things like 2.5 and five gig ethernet that will also run in category 5E. So when Link IQ makes a measurement, it's basically qualifying it, qualifying it for an ethernet speed, not a cable category standard. And that's an important thing to know. <laughs> this is maybe a quick way of explaining it. Just because Link IQ says a link will support 10 gigabit Ethernet, that doesn't mean it's a Category 6A link. Category 6A was designed to support 10 gigabit Ethernet, but just because 10 gigabit Ethernet will work on that cable doesn't mean it's a Category 6A link. And that's the difference between, say, the certification you get with one of our DSX analyzers versus what you get with a Link IQ. Another way to look at this is that all the links out there in the world that support 10 gigabit are not the same as Category 6A links. Now, all Category 6A links, however, will support 10 gigabit speeds. So if you're doing testing where you need to certify to a TIA or an ISO standard, you're still going to need something like a DSX 5000 or a DSX 8000. But if you just want to know if the link will support 1 gig or 10 gig, the Link IQ can do that job for you. Now let's look at another thing that you've got. Now, I, you probably all wish that every patch panel you ever walked up to was as neat as this one. But even in one that's as neat as this one, you might look at it and go, yeah, where does that cable right over there go? It's not always easy to tell. And where does it plug into at the other end? Well, the other end may be 300 feet away at the other end of the building. It's very hard to tell that. So we added a bunch of features in there to make it easy. Uh, a cable toner, which allows you to put a tone on the signal and then use one of our fancy little probes, either our analog probe or our digital probe to tell you where that cable goes. Or you can blink the port to see where that cable goes as well. So that's a very handy way to understand where the cable goes. If it's plugged into a switch, actually even easier. You don't need any of the tone generator or the blinking port light. If it's a managed switch or a smart switch, it'll actually tell you the port number of the switch, the name of the switch, and the VLAN of that switch. So whether the cable's plugged in or not, easy to figure out where it goes. Next up, let's say you're installing an access point or security camera, and you want to know, do I have enough power? Is this thing going to work? You know, unlike uh, an outlet in the wall, pretty much guaranteed to get enough power out of it. But with power over Ethernet, it depends on the type of switch and how it's been configured. And it's not easy to tell, especially when you're 300 feet away from it at the other end of the building. And even if you walk up and look at the switch, you can't necessarily tell how much power a specific port is configured for. Now you can always go and talk to the network engineer or telnet into the switch and do that, but who's got time for that? And it's a long ways away. So with the Link IQ, you can just plug it into the port or into the uh, end of the cable, and it will tell you what class is available up to the new 802.3 BT standards, which can supply up to 90 watts. In addition to telling you what the switch says it can do, it will also tell you the load test. And what that means is we actually put a load across there to see if you can really deliver that power. Because it's one thing for the switch to say, yes, I can supply a certain amount of power, but it's another thing for it to be able to actually supply that power through the cabling all the way out to where you are at the far end of it. So there's your, uh, there's your thing. 
shows you uh, what the uh, power levels are, the classes, and if you've got enough voltage when we put it under load. And finally, you need to report this stuff out, right? I mean, once again, whether it's to your boss or to your customer, they want to see a report that tells them that uh, everything's working well. So to that end, we allow you to store up to a thousand results on the tester, which is great. Um, once again, I, I never recommend that people store a thousand results on their tester without backing them up somewhere. It's really easy to lose it and these things do get stolen. So we've also got the ability to move the data over to Linkware PC and generate a report like you see right here. Now, some of you may say, hey, Linkware PC, I remember that. I use that with my, uh, my DSX or my Certifiber Pro. Yeah, that's right. It's the same Linkware. Well, okay, it's a new version of the Linkware, but it's the same Linkware that supports all of Fluke Network's products, well, almost all of them, going back at least 20 years. So if you've been using Linkware PC and you have, say, our Versive certification or even maybe one of our old DTX cable analyzers, you can use that same, with a new upgrade version of it, same software for all the products that you were using it before. You know how to use it. It's great. As we point out here, it's, it's effectively an industry standard, about 40,000 downloads a year of this product. So it's, it's out there. And in fact, you can even, like you do with the, um, with the DSX series, you can even provide a digital copy of your test reports to the customer. They can download Link, uh, Linkware PC and then look at them. And there's an encryption in there to make it so that you know, they can't be messed with so they can trust those reports. And with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Jim, who is ready now to take us through the live demo. Always more exciting, less PowerPoint, more demos. Absolutely. <laughs> this is not a recording. Still morning here. And uh, thank you for the introduction, Mark. Okay, uh, really a, a fairly simple tool, but something that we think is going to be very practical for people out there. I have a link IQ here. You can see about what the size is and uh, the screen's a little bit easier to read over there. So let's uh, look at some common use cases. First thing, you have a cable and you don't know where the cable goes. It probably isn't three feet long. It probably plugs into the wall and comes out on the patch panel somewhere. You've been told to install a new device and you wanna know is this cable attached to something? Well, I'll just push auto test and it's gonna run and it's gonna tell us this cable is open about 1.7, about five feet away. Great, that's, that's very helpful. Another situation that we come across is where somebody is installing cables. Maybe your customer doesn't require you to deliver a certification report, but boy, you wanna make sure that your technician installs the cable properly so that it works and you'd like to save those test results because you found that your technicians, if they know that their test results have to be saved, they're gonna pay a little bit more attention when they're doing the termination. So I'm gonna use the same link and we need to put a little remote identifier. We're gonna put this remote identifier here on the far end and the remote identifier can also be helpful if you have an undocumented network and you wanna check several links at the same time. So we'll push test. And now what this is telling us, we found remote identifier number three and I've selected a hundred megabit limit, but this, yes, the cable's only five feet long. <laughs> it would support 10 gigabit ethernet. It's pretty fast as well for a test. And again, how are we testing this? We're measuring how much signal is, how much signal loss there is, and then we're measuring noise, near and crosstalk, and return loss. So you know, just click save here. I can type in the cable ID and save this again, and it's ready to upload to Linkware. Now, we've been looking beyond the market for just the RJ45 connectors and working with our friends on the dark side of Fluke, <laughs> yeah, the people who don't work with fiber optics, we found that they've got a lot of industrial customers who are transitioning from an older bus type protocol within their industrial uh, environments and they're moving up to Ethernet. Ethernet offers benefits, fewer gateways, 
more widely available, but an RJ45 might not be the ideal connector for a harsh industrial environment. They may use one of these round connectors, this M series connectors. This is an M12. This is the D series. There's also an M12X and M8. And well, I've got a problem that if I want to put a terminator on the end of this cable, uh, round and square, that doesn't work so well. So we have this interesting one size fits all terminator. I hate to say that, but maybe this will allow me to terminate into an RJ45, an M12D with two, two pairs, an M12X with four pairs, or the smaller size M8 connector. Just going to screw this in here real quick. Oh boy, I, as Mark said, this is a live demonstration. There we go. And we'll see that one of the benefits to this is it's a pretty solid connection. That's gonna help to keep dirt and moisture out of there. It'll help if there's vibration on the line. Now I'm gonna plug this in to the end of the cable that we just tested, because I also wanna show you the ease of finding a problem. So we're gonna push test and run the test. This is remote ID number one, and I'm passing 100 megabit, but I'm not doing anything more than 100 megabit because I only have two pairs in this cable. The other two pairs only go so far. Again, the M12D, D for data connector, only has that many pairs, and I can easily check the length of the pairs. And here I can see that the four, five, and seven, eight pairs end at about this distance. So very simple for doing our, our analysis of what's going on there. And again, I mixed myself up. We did our remote ID. Hey, there's our remote adapter and I'll let the slides guide me. Let's do that switch port test. Okay, so you've got a document, you've got a network that's poorly documented and it's your job to install new wireless access points. Hey, the school got some money, they're installing new wireless access points. Which port on the switch are we attached to? Because I've configured multiple VLANs and I want all my wireless access point traffic to go on VLAN 15 and I want my security camera system to go on VLAN 12. So let's try plugging into the switch and seeing if we're in the right place here. Now, again, it needs to be a managed switch just because you have a home networking switch, something with low cost. It may not provide the information of which port we're attached to. Uh, that is a little bit more of a capable switch. So we see that we're on uh, chassis one slot zero port nine of a switch creatively named Marysville. Guess where we are right now? And it's telling us we're on VLAN 12. Wait a minute. I don't want to connect to VLAN 12. I can call up my network engineer and maybe have him dynamically reconfigure the port or what the heck, let's try moving to another port on the switch. I seem to have several available. I'm not going to save that because that test was wrong. And I don't necessarily have to document my troubleshooting. They just want to know that it's working now. So let's see, hey, there's that VLAN 15 that we were looking for. Now I know which port to connect to. Now I haven't run a power over ethernet test because it takes some time to run a power over ethernet test and not every user is running power over ethernet. So let's jump into our setup screen here. Okay, let's gently push the screen and go to the setup. <laughs> and you can see the, the configuration for this is really pretty straightforward. Here's my test limit for the speed, uh, the connection speed that I'm going to test. The NVP will affect the length of the cable, and I'm going to turn on our power over Ethernet test because, well, now I run a, want to test power over Ethernet. And, well, I was going to even move up to the next switch, but since I didn't advance the slides, let's test this switch for power over Ethernet. Now, the power over Ethernet test is an interesting one because it is not a fixed value. There are multiple classes. There are different varieties of power over ethernet. And the power device, the PD here, is going to ask the power sourcing equipment, the PSE, can you give me class one? Can you give me class two? Can you give me class four? And the power sourcing equipment may not speak class four. So we're gonna time out. We're gonna wait and see if they answer us. You know, Windows, I'll give it a little bit of time. We're also going to check whether we have a single signature or dual signature power being offered. 
So in this case, what we found is the switch is advertising, the switch is saying, I can offer you class four. Okay, that's nice that you're offering class four, but I wanna check and make sure that I'm receiving that. There's our load test. Green check mark is good. That means we are receiving this level of power. Now, again, after I've saved these test results, Mark mentioned, we can send this over to Linkware. Why Linkware? Because Linkware is easy. Because it works with, well, let's see some of these tester types that we've worked with in the past. I've got test results from our new CertiFiber fiber tester, new, well, relatively new, <laughs> DSP4000 results, DSX5000 results, and LinkIQ results, all in the same software, making it easier to administer the results. The final thing I want to point out to you is not everyone gets to have a demo unit in their hands. And so, they might want to take a look at our virtual demo. And the virtual demo is very much like what I'm doing here. It can be run on a PC or even on a cell phone. And when you're doing it on a cell phone, it's very similar to having the tester in your hand, just you don't have an RJ45 measurement port there. <laughs> so I can click on things. Maybe I want to click on this. Um, OK. Maybe I want to click on the video camera here and say, hey, is this video camera working? The customer says it's not working well. We'll push test. And hey, I'm connected to a switch. It's that same switch from Marysville. It's telling us about the speeds, but a red X. Red X is bad. So in this case, it offered us that same class four, but we aren't getting enough power. There is a problem somewhere. What are we going to blame? Well, from experience, we're going to blame the physical layer. So let's try testing just the cable. And we test just the cable. And actually, this cable will still support gigabit Ethernet. But we notice that it's not doing 2.5, 5, and 10. It's telling us there's an insertion loss problem. Little bit of a higher level thinking here, but notice cable length is getting a little long and we know that cable length is going to affect that voltage drop. So the virtual demo, Mark's going to post the link for this as we get to the end of the presentation. Something for you guys to try. And again, if you have any questions out there, please send them in. I think uh, Mark's got a couple more slides, then we'll address those questions. Mark, can I toss it back to you? Yes, you can. Thanks, Jim. Uh, is my screen up there? It is. Models it. and bundles. Excellent. Beautiful. Models and bundles, yeah, just a little bit of the uh, the sales part of the presentation, I guess. Um, <clears throat> we have two versions of the Link IQ standard unit, which is, I guess, what we would call this here, which is the base unit which comes with their charger and all that. By the way, it's a USB-C charging port. So if you lose our charger, you don't have to come back to us for another one. And in fact, I often charge mine up using my laptop, which seems a little strange, but it, it actually it works. It's great. But, uh, and the other news is, of course, is that you've probably got cables around to be able to connect it to your computer as well. The Link IQ kit includes our IntelliTone probe so that you can you know, tone your cables and figure out where they go. One great thing about the IntelliTone, by the way, if you look very carefully on the bottom of it, it's got an RJ45 port. So you can actually plug it into the cable so you can be 100% sure you're connected to the other end of the cable that you want to be. It also includes remote IDs a set of six additional ones. And as Jim pointed out, you can take those around, you can plug one into each office, then go back to the wiring closet and test all of them one right after another very quickly. It makes you more efficient to get your job done. On the industrial side, Jim pointed out that we've got this adapter and we also bundle that with a number of different, uh, what you might call translator cables, adapter cables to support the M12 and the M8 connection types. Uh, so that's a separate model that includes those adapters. And then we said, you know, a lot of those people need to tone stuff and they want remote IDs as well. So we've got a model that handles that as well. And this is the adapter. I think Jim gave you a pretty good uh, demonstration of that, but it does allow you to connect to these industrial connectors, which we're seeing a lot more of out there in the, uh, in the industrial environment. So this is the point where we get questions. So, uh, so Jim, are you ready to handle? handle the, uh, the questions. And by the way, if anyone else has questions, feel free to send them in either through the chat or the Q&A. <clears throat> and let's, uh, let's bring that up. Hey, Jim, first question is, and I think I know what this, this uh, gentleman's getting at, is there the capability to upload directly to the web, like with their DSX? 
Okay, good, good question. Uh, no, right now the connection to Linkware is through the USB cable. So you'll, just like with Linkware, plug the USB cable, USB-C cable into a laptop or a PC that's running Linkware and download your results that way. All right, thanks, Jim. Another question that we've got is, when will this product be available? Oh, great question. Uh, April, April 6th of 2021. It's available now. And there even should be in stock, some in stock at your favorite distributor. No, very good, thank you. Um, another one is, um, this, is a, this is one that uh, uh, came in. And that is, uh, what about uh, being able to do things like uh, pull up the IP address of the switch or maybe even be able to ping the switch? That is, a, that is an interesting question. And we get that question and we get the question, will it do packet capture and decode and will it measure latency? Today, the tester is quite simple. It does what we have shown it. It will connect to the switch. It will tell you the speeds that the switch is offering. It will tell you the configuration of the port, but we are not connecting to the network. Oh my gosh, how can you not connect to the network? Well, I'm not sure that that is what we need. We've seen some security issues with networks where they don't want an unknown device connecting there. So very simple, we are not going to generate any traffic on your network. Uh, this is a very simple tool. If you have a technician who has greater understanding of the networks, greater understanding of the configuration, this will certainly help them in being able to do the cable test. But my guess is they're going to have a laptop full of applications. So today, nope, no IP address and no ping. Now, Jim, I'm going to ask another question that came up, which um, you might say may be related to that first question, but, uh, but, but of course I would never imply that it was related to the, or that last question I should say. And that is, can the unit be upgraded with software? And absolutely it can be upgraded with software. Guess how you upgrade it? Uh, with your laptop? Through Linkware, just like Through you've Link. been updating your DSP and your DTX for years and years. So absolutely, we're, hey, we're on V1. I, I expect that this platform will have some uh, interesting things to do in the future. All right, say no more, say no more. Hey, another question came up is, is there any special you know, reporting or other software that is provided with the product that I, that I need to use with it other than Linkware? <laughs> you know, it turns out we have software and it, and it is free software. And it's Linkware. We, we've got a lot of people who have used our Cable IQ product for years, and they like Cable IQ. They say, wow, this is great. I send it out, my technician, and they can run the test, and they save it, and then I know that they, they wired it properly. I even deliver that test result to my customer, even though they didn't ask for it, because it makes me look better. But uh, could you update that Cable IQ software? And... No, <laughs> sorry, we've decided uh, we're gonna focus on Linkware and this product runs on Linkware. So that same software you've been using all the time to generate the reports. So in other words, there's no other software, of course, for no. LinkIQ that, uh, that you need to get, okay. Um, let's see, what else do I have? Um, you also mentioned, you answered one of the other questions that came up is uh, what is the cost for Linkware? And you mentioned that there's no charge for that. Um, Let's see. Another one is, will this work with the toner that I have? Uh, probably, probably. <laughs> it, and, and I say that because I don't know what toner you have, <laughs> but I'm guessing <laughs> you've got some kind of common inductance probe, uh, which is like our, our, um, Pro 3000? our Pro 3000. Thank you. Almost said FI there. Yeah, the, and the Pro 3000 is our common, we call it an analog tone and probe. The, used for when you have a single pair environment. And so yes, you can generate an analog probe and it'll it'll work fine with that. And then as Mark mentioned, if you have an IntelliTone, the IntelliTone is a great way to go, not only because it's a digital probe and it does a better job of filtering out interference like fluorescent lights and, and power cords. I'm sure your analog uh, 
your analog probe, if it's not this yellow Pro 3000 buzzes when you find a, a light, the Intellitone will be able to ignore that interference because it's a digital probe. And then it has that really useful cable map port. So when you get to the patch panel, you've got it narrowed down. It's one of these two or three ports. Hey, switch it to cable map mode, plug it into the bottom of the Intellitone, and it'll map the cable. You'll know for sure that you're on the right port. And you'll know if you got continuity on all four pairs. Very good. And of course, the, the, the question that always comes up is, can it tell what category of cable I have? Well, I think we, we talked about that. And unfortunately, no, that you, for that, you need a certification tool, right? Yeah. And there's a standard that has been developed for many, many, many years. I think TSB 67 came out in 1995. That is the best experience of the industry. That's not just the cabling people. That are those are the application people, the people from 802.3, the, the Cisco's of the world saying, this is what we need your cabling to look like. So we're always going to preach that new installations, you should use a certification tool. That's the experience of the industry. Let's certify the cable. Let's use Link IQ for our maintenance. But, but uh, no, we're not gonna tell categories. <laughs> we are gonna tell you what speed it'll support. Um, we also get uh, another question, which is, will remote IDs from the cable IQ or microscanner work with the Link IQ as well? Now, I'm pretty sure the microscanner ones are the same. In fact, I'm about 99% sure they're the same. I don't know, though, about cable IQ. Um, it will work with the microscanner, but it does not work with the cable IQ remote IDs. They okay, use a thanks. different technology there. Ah, there, there's an interesting question, but I think it's maybe going to be a future enhancement. Can I charge this unit up via an Ethernet cable using PoE? A cool idea. But I think the answer is no as of today, right? Yeah. What, what I've been doing is I have uh, one of those external battery packs for my cell phone, and I can use that to, to charge my unit. So if I'm wow, you know, walking cool. through the halls to, to run a test on, on the far end of something... I've already got that, uh, I don't know, what are those things called, a battery pack, and I can mm -hmm. charge from that. The ones the Chinese airlines won't let you fly with. Um, <laughs> or at least they give you a real hassle I've, when you fly. Yeah, I've, yes, I, th th that's a discussion um, for another day. This is an another interesting idea, but I think that this might be a little bit out of the realm. Can the Link IQ power a PoE device, uh, for example, a camera? No, we are a PD, we are a powered device. We are not power sourcing equipment. Yeah, and I think, you know, eventually people would want 90 watts of power to come out of the uh, Link IQ, and at, at which point you'd have to carry around something like a car battery with it, I fear. Um, so that, that may be a little, a little yeah. impractical, but I, it, it would actually be very handy, though, if you wanted to plug in, say, an access point. And try. Well, I don't know anything out there that does that other than, yeah. you know, calling a switch with you. Lug luggable power supplies. Uh, yeah. yeah, those things that have have wheels on them. Certainly, they're you know, hey, bring a battery out and and you can charge your access point or or power up your camera while you're doing it. But it, that does bring up an interesting point about the PoE testing. Um, yes, we're not power sourcing equipment, so we won't provide power to a phone or to an access point. And this is an Ethernet tester. We are designed to test Ethernet. We are designed to test power over Ethernet. So if you have some obscure proprietary form of power that your device supplies, we probably are not going to identify that because again, we are looking for the universality of power over ethernet. I'll, I'll use this moment to mention that the micro scanner has gotten approval from the ethernet alliance. They have a certification program to identify that the device is interoperable with the POE standards, the AT, the AF, and the BT, and we want to be standards compliant there, but it is not in our interest to draw power from any device because if it's not standards compliant, then the thing you're going to plug in probably won't work. Okay. Hey, here's a question. This is actually a good one. Since you mentioned it won't connect to the network, does that mean it won't alert network access control sniffing? Since the tool is not 802.1x capable, you mentioned it doesn't actually connect to the network. And I, I believe that's true, that it will not uh, 
trigger a lot yeah, of it, network it'll security de devices. It'll depend on the sensitivity of the device because yes, for a minute, we are going to turn on the port and we're going to have an LLDP or a CDP conversation with the port to understand what the port is and what its capabilities are. And we're going to ask it for power. But again, we come across a lot of customers who say, I can't attach anything to my network that asks for an IP address because we'll be hearing the boots down the hall. And yes, there are situations where I want to test connecting to the network, but you know, maybe a bit of a marketing decision. We see a lot more situations where people go, I think the cable is bad. I think I'm connected to the wrong switch port. And once we answer that question of, is the cable good and which port of the switch we're attached to, we can step away and as part of the troubleshooting process, then you can look more at the end device or then you can look more at the network. And now another question uh, that just came in was, uh, does the device show just voltage or wattage? And so I put this image up here so you could see, it actually shows both. And the voltage, the voltage usually is not as interesting of information unless it gets too low, in which case that it's very interesting information. POE voltage is, I believe it's in the spec, it's 48 to 54 volts, I think. But that doesn't tell you how much power is there. So we actually do both. We'll show you the wattage that's being offered. And then we'll show you the voltage when we load it to see if it can actually provide that wattage. And if the voltage goes too low uh, because of Ohm's law, then you'll know that there's uh, something wrong and it's not going to work. It's not going to supply the wattage you want either. So I don't know, anything to add to that, Jim? Uh, no, we're not discussing Ohm's law at this time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Thanks for asking. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. We may have to use this in a secure area. Are there security issues I should be concerned with? Is there a way to store results on a USB flash drive? That's interesting. Great question. Um, this does not connect to a USB flash drive, and this does not have a wireless chip in it. So we, with our fancy cable testers that we use to connect to Linkware Live to send the test results up to the cloud, we had to make a special version for people in secure environments that does not have a wireless chip. And LinkIQ does not have a wireless connection. Okay, we're going a little bit long here. So I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna throw out, let's see if we can get to, I'll get to two more of the questions. One of which is, does this product replace any of the older testers that did PoE testing? And Jim, you mentioned the, the microscanner PoE, which also does PoE testing and all the way to class eight, uh, the latest standards. And this uh, of course does not replace that product. That product, the big difference there is that it doesn't do the cable performance that you get with the Link IQ. And it also does not load the circuit. It tells you what the switch says it can supply but it doesn't actually load it to see if, well, can I really get it through the cabling and the configuration of the switch? On the other hand, uh, a microscanner PoE is less than half the price of a Link IQ. So if you don't need any documentation, you're not worried about loading and you can figure out which port you're connected to in some other way, yeah, you can just go ahead with the uh, microscanner PoE and uh, you can still get some, you know, some pretty good PoE testing out of that product. And I guess it's a little smaller. Oh, yeah. And there, there are some dramatic enhancements for some of our older products. Remember, Cable IQ uh, detected PoE back in the 802.3 AF days. And the basic microscanner would, uh, I don't remember if the basic microscanner would detect PoE. I, I believe it did. And I think then you were supposed to unplug it. Okay. <laughs> okay. But yeah, this is, hey, this is a modern tester. Cable IQ did not measure up to 10 gig because 10 gig didn't no. exist when it came out. Is anyone using 10 gig today? Maybe not, but I certainly see people stepping in the direction of two and a half gig. And, um, and yeah, power over ethernet well, has gone up to the BT standard now. That, that's a key thing. I, I'm sure there are probably people on this call that bought a tester from us more than 10 years ago. So we want to make sure that we're making a tester that they can be using 10 years from now. Um, and the last question I'm going to throw at you here. Does the Link IQ show all tagged and untagged VLANs on a part on a port, or only the default untagged VLAN? Well, look at the time. It's been nice, everyone. 
<laughs> depends on depends on your switch. What we're going to find is different switches supply different information. We have tested it with the call it top tier brands, top tier models, but boy, there are a lot of Ethernet switches out there. So I think we're going to see a little bit of variety in the information that comes out of it. Yeah, that's probably true. That's probably true. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. One other question that just popped up. Uh, PoE++. And of course, yes, it supports that as long as it's... Uh, well, PoE++ is supposed to be incorporated in the 802.3 BT standard. So if your switch is compliant with that, we will show you the information for that as well. PoE++, I think, is what? Is that 70 watts, Jim? Is that really uh, I'm looking for your presentation Yeah, I'm <laughs> with the chart on it. Again, uh, 802.3 ATAF and BT compliant PoE. We know that we have, we have great interoperability and standards compliant with, and certainly we have seen first generation devices that maybe you're going for some specmanship and are claiming BT compliance that may not be completely BT compliant. Yeah, you know, I guess the answer to the question about PoE is that we support, we would support any device that complies with the standards. But as you know, there might, there are versions of PoE out there. I mean, the one, the one that I always worry about the most is there's the always on PoE, right? We'll just put some voltage on these pairs and it'll be on all the time and it'll power up our device at the far end. And that's great if, you know, the device out there is ready and willing to deal with it. But yeah, certainly I've used mine with, uh, with uh, mid-span power injectors and it, and it works, it has worked with those. Yeah. Um, I've also though used it with, Hey, I've got the least expensive uh, four port switch from Amazon that provides PoE both for my home network and for testing some testers. And it's, it's cute. It offers something called high PoE in Spanish. We call it Ola PoE, but that's not standards compliant. So we, we don't yeah. recognize that. And we work with many, and we've tested it with non-standard compliant devices. However, there are a lot of things out there that are not standard compliant. The one thing I do know is I, I am not aware of any PoE devices that are in excess of the BT standard, in other words, the 90 watts. So, uh, yeah, you get, yeah, there's some question, and I think it's specmanship where people start to talk about 100 watts, but there is a very important line that we don't want to cross. We want to make sure that we're staying within low power because as we start to put right. more, more power, then, yeah, then our uh, friends on the dark side are going to come in to do those measurements. <laughs> Yes. Uh, when they talk about category five or category three or category four, that's a whole different deal. That's a voltage level. Yeah. Don't, and we don't, don't want to go there. <laughs> that, that'll here. be at our, right. our webinar with, with Ohm's law. <laughs> All right. Well, Hey, thanks everybody for uh, joining us today. And um, there will be a recording of this available. I'm surprised I didn't get that question, but I guess everyone is so, uh, so useful. This, to the fact this that isn't that complicated. Available. It's really useful, but it's just not that hard. If you uh, if you are interested, you can go ahead. We've got some QR codes on the screen. You can just shoot this with your phone. You can take the virtual demo, as Jim said. You can talk to a specialist. You could even eventually, if you wanted to, talk to us. And then you can also go to the product page and uh, you know download a data sheet or get some great pictures or watch a video, whatever whatever you think you need to do. And um, on behalf of uh, um, Jim and myself and everybody at Fluke, thanks for joining us and have yourself a great day. Yeah, thanks everyone.